Hey, what up? It's Brad with Whole Bluff Construction. We're standing here in Pro Source of Port Ritchie in one of their beautiful kitchen displays. If you've not come here and seen the showroom, it's amazing. And the question that we're gonna answer today is what type of flooring should you put in your kitchen? Most of the time when you remodel your kitchen, you want to do the floors at the same time because there's no guarantee that your new cabinets are going to go in the same footprint as your old cabinets. We are literally, as I'm speaking, dealing with that exact issue in a kitchen we were doing in Odessa. We, to be honest, warned the customer and we're dealing with it with trim and taking care of it. But that said, you should plan on doing your floors with your kitchen. It's better to do it all at one time. It's going to be torn out anyways, might as well. So the natural question is, there's tons of different flooring options, which is best to put in your kitchen. Unlike most of my videos where the answer is that it depends, that's only slightly the answer today. So to answer the question, there are three major players that you could put in your kitchen. One would be, and I actually have them here right in front of me. So one would be hardwood, so an engineered hardwood. The second would be a ceramic or porcelain tile. I would suggest porcelain over ceramic because it's a harder, denser material. The third would be a luxury vinyl plank. So again, hardwood, tile, vinyl. Now, a lot of people when they hear vinyl still think that it's the old vinyl product that used to be peel and stick. Not that, this is click and lock system similar to laminate, but it's completely waterproof. In your kitchen, realistically, you probably don't want to do engineered hardwood. That said, I'll put a little caveat on that. There are some products, they sell a couple here at ProSource, that are waterproof, even though they're engineered hardwood. The old style of engineered hardwood without the waterproof coating is gonna start to expand and contract. As it gets wet, it'll expand and it'll contract as it dries. And it'll get bubbly and it'll not stay perfectly flat. And it'll get warped over time and damaged and the finish will start to wear if you get it wet. Because your kitchen's a wet area, you want to plan on stuff getting on the floor. It's gonna happen. Somebody's gonna drop a glass in your in your kitchen with wine and it's gonna go everywhere. So you wanna think about what's stain resistant and what is water resistant. Now, if you're looking at the difference between a tile, most likely a, por a porcelain tile versus vinyl, there are some major key differentiators that I want to bring up because I see this a lot. I see people make some pretty critical mistakes uh, and there's some key differences in uh, the wear life, so how long you can expect the floor to last for before you can really see signs of wear, and then budget, and we'll talk about both of those. Let's start with the wear and tear. On a porcelain tile, your wear life is gonna be the highest of almost any product you can possibly get. Tile is a hardy material. It's rocks, right? It's literally a rock on your floor. So that, that being said, they have a very hard finish, and it's very hard to scratch them. A porcelain tile is very hard to scratch. It's very hard to chip. There's a difference between a porcelain and a ceramic. I won't go into it too much, but basically a porcelain tile is denser. You'll know a porcelain tile when you see it because it won't be red on the back. They're also typically labeled. This is glazed porcelain. So like I said, you'll know the ceramic tile because they're red on the back. You want porcelain, just remember that. So it's a very hard, durable finish. Your dogs aren't gonna scratch the floor when they're running through it. If you have big animals, if you have kids, tile is the most hardy material. That said, the newer vinyl plank products, the luxury vinyl plank, are getting hardier. Their wear layer is getting thicker, which means that it takes more to get through to where you can actually see a scratch on this material. But in early products, and in, in the earlier stage products, the, even, even the really good manufacturers, and I'll name some names, even the Cortex, uh, or the, uh, there, there's a couple other ones, even some of the, the other really good brands. I love their products, but an issue that I've seen, if I'm gonna be honest, is that you get wear marks when you're moving your appliances, which when you're remodeling a kitchen, you pull the appliances out and you put the new appliances back in or put the old appliances back in, you're gonna be pushing a stove around, you're gonna be moving probably wine refrigerators, you're gonna be dealing with big sinks and stuff like that, big refrigerators. You're gonna be moving things around that are very heavy on that floor. So keep that in mind. There is a possibility with your vinyl because it's a less dense material and the surface isn't literally a stone, there's a possibility that you're gonna get wear marks on the vinyl right off the bat when you move your appliances in. There are some products that are engineered amazingly to be very stiff and they're very dense. That is what I would suggest if you're going to be putting the vinyl in your kitchen. My favorite, as you could probably guess, is to do tile in a kitchen. In my opinion, that is the best option. Now, when we talk about budget, 
your hardwood and your tile are going to be similar in price ranges both for the install and for the material, if, especially if you take those two together. You can get a little pricier on the hardwood, the install is a little less, tile might be a little less expensive, installs a little bit more. Typically, on, for a tile, you're going to pay a general contractor somewhere between eight and $12 a square foot to install tile. That's gonna largely depend on how big the tile is, uh, how many square feet they're doing, and what the substrate is, what kind of subfloor you're going down onto. For vinyl, you're probably gonna pay anywhere from $3 a square foot if you go straight with an installer, or you could pay as high as $7 a square foot. Really, depending on your area, again, what you're going down over, you have to do some sort of sound barrier under, underneath, and uh, what's the shape of the room, how many square feet, that all plays into how much you're gonna pay. Also, transition strips are gonna factor in there as well. Now, let's talk price of the product. Typically, a vinyl, Floor, a luxury vinyl floor is going to be somewhere in the three dollar a square foot range three to four i'd say this particular product from swift train uh, this is 350 a square foot at pro source this porcelain tile is also 350 this hardwood floor is 425 a square foot so just to give you an idea of just for these particular products typically your prices are going to go tile is typically going to be the cheapest for the product then your vinyl plank then your hardwood, keep in mind that could totally switch. There are some tiles in the showroom that are $20 a square foot. Same for the hardwoods. You can really get up into some exotic woods and colors that really drive the price up. So bottom line to tie it all together, what you wanna keep in mind is what's your lifestyle like? Do you have large animals? Are you moving large appliances in and out of your kitchen? If so, my honest recommendation based on what I've seen as an installer would to not be doing vinyl in your kitchen. My suggestion would be tile if your budget allows. Now, if you're trying to be more budget conscious, you're going to want to do the vinyl. Hardwood is an option in your kitchen. I don't want to count that out entirely, but I would suggest considering the waterproof hardwoods, the newer engineered products that have come out on the market in the last couple of years. They're amazing products. You get all the, the beautiful look of hardwood with more of a performance of a, a tile to vinyl. And keep in mind that hardwood is a very dense material. It's hard, it is also hard to scratch. So that said, I hope you, that brought you a lot of value. I hope I brought clarity to the question of what should you put on the floor in your kitchen when you remodel it. If you have additional questions, please send us an email at homeloveconstruction at gmail.com. We will answer them in a future video. I'll look forward to talking to you very soon. Thanks for watching, peace.